How's it going, friends? Pete here. Just wanted to give you an update. If you haven't already heard, Coplock.org founder and my good buddy Adamo Freeman is now caged in Manchester, New Hampshire's Valley Street Jail. Uh, he's done an excellent job at uh, updating, keeping folks in the loop for this whole process, but I just wanted to make a quick video and bring you up to speed on how he arrived at the situation and um, hopefully point out just how uh, unjust the claim justice system really is uh, with the end goal being that I hope you will further realize that you own yourself and that to place authority, artificial authority and people with a badge or someone who wears a black dress and hits the table with a hammer or um, any of their colleagues is just ludicrous and hopefully then uh, we can work together to figure out better alternatives where nobody has extra rights and where the real aggressors are held accountable for their actions because once that day happens, once those things become the expected norm rather than the allowance of double standards for such people, then we'll live in a more peaceful, prosperous society when good people like Adamo Freeman and other folks standing up for their rights don't have to be caged or, or won't be caged uh, for doing what's right. Back in early 2010, four Manchester PD employees uh, severely beat a man named Chris Maklovich at the Strange Brew Tavern in Manchester. Um, their boss didn't find any issue with their actions, and the city attorney declined to press any charges. And in fact, the four individuals that assaulted Chris tried to get paid for their actions. They tried to file for overtime for the reports they filled out after the incident, and they tried to charge uh, Chris with some threats of their own, but those were later dropped. So Chris has never got any justice. Uh, fast forward over a year from the incident, and the New Hampshire State Attorney General said, well, even though it's not the best day in Manchester PD's history, we're not going to file any charges against them. Adamo and myself hope to hold these individuals accountable, to bring light to their actions, to encourage other people to think about how this situation played out in the hopes of mitigating such a incident in the future. So he and I just happened to be passing through Manchester at the time. It was about two weeks after the Attorney General's statement, and we got together with some of our friends, a few dozen folks, went out and did a pro-police accountability rally outside Manchester PD. Uh, some people were holding signs, some people were conversing with passerbys and Manchester PD employees, and others were riding with children's chalk on the sidewalk in the building uh, with statements uh, advocating for uh, the elimination of double standards, advocating for individual responsibility, peace, things like that. Um, in what unfortunately has become uh, too, too commonplace, uh, some people present, eight of us in total, were arrested that day. Um, Adamo was arrested. He was dropping on the side of the building uh, by John Patty. And when he was arrested, uh, Damo not being one to want to assist uh, his kidnapper, uh, went limp. And because he went limp, he was charged with two counts of resisting. One for dropping, for going limp, and a second one for not assisting in uh, when he was being brought into the cage at Manchester PD. So uh, late last year, he was uh, found guilty of the resisting charge and... In January of this year, of 2012, he was told he would spend, uh, his sentence was 12 months in jail with 10 months suspended, which means that he'd spend two months in a cage, and if he had good time, actually spend 40 days in a cage. So Damo appealed this sentence knowing that it's ludicrous, <laughs> because again, he did nothing wrong. He was clear, he was merely trying to point out the double standards that existed, Adamo was told by court personnel that he would receive a letter or phone call notifying him of his next court date. He never got that letter, but he did get a letter that said he had missed his court date and that he would then be sentenced for the resisting charge. Uh, Adamo, he's never missed a court date in his life. Uh, he's never done any actions, you know, he's never been arrested for things that have a victim that damaged property or anything like that. Um, so, he, and he wanted to bring this in front of a jury. He wanted to speak plainly. He wanted to communicate that he had done nothing wrong, that in fact he was trying to 
oust and shine light on the uh, bad actions of others, of people who claim to work for uh, the residents of Manchester, of people who claim to serve and protect. But, you know, that, that didn't happen. Instead, he himself was targeted. Adamo was very thorough and transparent in his actions. You know that if you've been following cop block for any length of time, or if you want to get up to speed, if, if this is a new, if you're new to cop block and you're unfamiliar with this incident, check out any of these videos here, or they're also linked to in the description below. But Adamo went and tried to take a, uh, a picture. He, he took a picture of the envelope that the first letter was supposedly sent to, and it had an address on it that doesn't even exist. And, you know, he has multiple times communicating his, he communicated his correct address to court personnel. So uh, he, he went into court today and asked the judge, hey, instead of sentencing me, why don't you step back and take a look and realize that your colleagues messed up. They didn't inform me of when this was, but in fact, it didn't happen. They took him today and he's now in Valley Street, as, as you know. Um, and while he's in Valley Street, on August 6th, he has jury selection for another incident that happened in Manchester uh, with a trial to happen a week to two weeks after the jury selection happened. So he is essentially going to be hamstrung in, in his uh, own preparation for that trial. But as he's indicated to me, he, he, he doesn't plan to uh, invest a lot of time into learning the legalese and the courtroom mumbo jumbo, I guess is what I call it, uh, to, to try to prove his, his innocence. You know, I always tell people, why do you have to go to law school? Why do you have to spend three years of your life to learn how to tell the truth? A demo is straight up. If anybody knows him, he's a straight up character. You know, he's, he'll tell you what's on his mind. And I expect him in August to go in and just be straight up about what happened with that incident. It's an incident for which he's threatened uh, to spend 21 years of his life in prison, again, for seeking accountability. Adamo and I spent a couple of months in Manchester last fall trying to bring more attention to the Chalking 8 incident to uh, encourage other people to stand up for their rights, to share their stories uh, about double standards they experienced when interacting with public servants. Uh, who worked in Manchester PD. We had 5,000 DVDs printed up to facilitate this, which included some of our own videos from Manchester, and we handed those out to a lot of people we interacted with. A couple of the people who received them were students at Manchester, uh, Manchester's West High School, and a, about a week after receiving this DVD, one of the students uh, videotaped while in the cafeteria the actions of Darren Murphy, who is a Manchester PD employee, and the actions that I mentioned uh, involved Darren Murphy taking uh, another student by the hair and slamming his head off the table because he didn't like uh, the language that that student used. Instead of being held accountable for his actions, Darren Murphy was on the job the next day and his colleagues were running interference for him. And the student that had been victimized from him, his actions was suspended and later expelled. And coplock.org, the website, was blocked from school computers. Students were told they could not wear coplock uh, t-shirts, hand out coplock literature. Uh, it was complete censorship by way of these uh, school admins. Again, people who claim that they are authorities. Uh, if you think about this situation in, in another scenario, what if I, as, a, as an adult, would have gone up to a 17-year-old kid, much like Darren Murphy did in school, what if I went up to a kid and grabbed his head and bounced it off a table? I, I would hope that most of you would say I was in the wrong. And that's essentially how Adamo and myself looked at Darren Murphy's actions at West High School. So what Adamo did after these students came up to us after the incident, shared with us the video which Coplock posted and which got some traction uh, from Boston Media and some a lot of outlets uh, online, uh, the Manchester PD didn't like that. The folks who work for Manchester PD wanted to, uh, I think, make an example of a demo. You know, so after a demo called the police department right after the incident happened, seeking comment, and called West High School seeking comment, he chopped up a video and put it online. Again, a demo's motivation was transparency and accountability. But what did what did uh, the people at Manchester Police Department do? They didn't thank him for 
the investigation he did, uh, you know, which maybe they should have done because it saved him some time and it ousted someone who's clearly heavy-handed. But instead, they, they have charged him with three counts of felony wiretapping, each of which carries a threat of seven years in prison. So Adamo right now is sitting a 40, a 60 day sentence for which he'll probably spend 40 days in a cage. Uh, and during that time, he's slated to go to jury trial for this three counts of felony wiretapping. The situation is clearly ridiculous. I encourage you to share this situation with those in your sphere to make some calls on Adamo's behalf. And if you're at all able to donate uh, to his pledge that he set up, which now being having over $500 raised means that a 25% of the money raised will be going to his commissary to set him up if and when he gets out of the pokey. And the rest will go to coplock.org so we can continue uh, advancing the mission of, of essentially eliminating double standards uh, so we can one day live in a society free from this ridiculous... Uh, these ridiculous threats when, when some people act as if they have extra rights because they don't at the end of the day they don't and they can try to threaten you and they can try to intimidate you and they can try to point to whatever legalese and text on paper they want but at the end of the day I know and I hope you know that nobody has extra rights and with that I'd like to say thank you to everyone who has supported me and the projects over the years I appreciate it more than you know. And though this may be sad that I'll be caged for an amount of time, pending my wiretapping case, it matters not to me. Whether I'm on the inside or outside, I'll be an activist. My mind is free, my conscience is clear. I have no regrets and have done what was right. And I hope people learn from these actions of mine and know that now is the time to stand up and do something about it. Again, if you feel my jailing is unjust and unlawful, please consider donating to the campaign. It will go to help coplock.org greatly, as well as myself, and hopefully it will send a message to my captors. As always, I'm Adamo Freeman, and this is coplock.org. Peace.